Um, so yeah, so I'll be doing an episode of Play on Tabletop in April, playing Dark Angels. Um, I, hey, I'm still at the peaking up in the background a little bit. Um, so I think we said we were going to do top three, but I think we can maybe first, and maybe we can go into our, our favorite book and why. So starting with you, wh starting with you, David, what, who is your, who's your favorite or who do you think the best black library author is based on? Oh my God. It's so hard because, okay. So like, I've let's been say reading uh, black library. Sorry, let's say, let's say no, favorite, not best, because I think best is objective. Whereas, uh, sorry, subjective. Whereas, well, they're both subjective, but, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah. but if we say your favorite, cool. it's a little, it's a lot more subjective. So you can't be wrong. Whereas with best, you can be wrong. Well, with one, I know I could be wrong. And the other one, I know with a assuredliness that I am definitely right. Okay, so... I'll go with the one on the, I, it's more subjective. First of all, I gotta say, uh, Graham McNeil's Fulgrim is my favorite science fiction novel, uh, in the 40k oh, universe. Awful. Sorry. You could <laughs> no, it's a great science fiction novel. If you took it outside of the 40k universe, a 30k universe, it's still a great novel. It's, it's all these ideas of humanity descending into madness, and it's a great idea of a story it, of like the first real human, the first real like betrayal between primates. Is that the one where? Like, sorry, when you say Fulgrim, is that Fulgrim in the Horus Heresy series or Fulgrim in the Primarch series? Because there's a, a Primarch series and there's a Horus Heresy book called Fulgrim too, isn't there? Fulgrim from the Horus okay. Heresy series. I think there's two the books called like... Fulgrim or, or something like that. Oh, well, the the OG okay. one. The one where okay. Horus and Ferris Manus are like... Oh, God. The feels. Um, great book. Um, but I'm going to go into my favorite author. And I just like hate it because I know it's going to be like, like... You're like, well, duh. Dan Abnett. I, I love Dan Abnett. The way he writes uh, 40K, 30K. Um, his ability to say... Um, his ability to write stories from a human aspect and making things feel massive and making things feel like you almost feel like you're, the characters are in peril. And the fact that if you're in a human novel series like Gaunt's Ghost and there's a space marine, the space marine feels nigh immortal. And it's so cool to see how a space marine is interacting around Imperial Guardsmen. And it's just like you see this power level shift that like how we always imagined a seven, eight foot tall you know, transhuman, spitting acid, eating brains, and just taking names. Um, and then he goes to 30K, where he can just talk about legions of space brains, and it feels right. And also just, like, he can he understands uh, creating um, massive battle scenes. You don't feel like he's missing a beat. Like, you can really feel like there's something gigantic happening. I think it's really important in these, in this universe in general, because... You know, like, we all, like, salivate at the idea of, like, titans fighting each other while, like, billions of humans melt under, like, sun-sized cannons, like, blasting holes through the earth, whatever. What have you. It's important to, like, be like, yeah, something big's happening, not just, like, three characters talking while the teeming ocean of human flesh beneath them is, like, melting, whatever. Like, sorry, I digress. And, you go to no, your sorry, who, so did Dan have it right, Fulgrim? No, Graham McNeil oh. did. Are you even listening? Yeah, but you said Dan Abnett's your favorite author. So your favorite yeah, book is, because... Graham Mc... uh, is Fulgrim. This is not by Dan, Dan yeah. Abnett, but your favorite author is Dan Abnett. But my fa... See, I yeah. actually have the same I, also... I have the same situation. So I think my favorite author is Aaron Devsky Bowden. And I particularly like okay. him because uh, the Night Lords trilogy and the, the newer trilogy, the Black Legion trilogy called Talon of Horus and Black Legion. And if you haven't read those guys, I highly, if you're a Chaos player and you haven't read those, I highly recommend them. Um, the Night Lords trilogy is basically about the Night Lords uh, in the current um, era, like right before the 13th Black Crusade. And it's like, it just kind of goes in like how like messed up they are after Conrad Cruz basically like, he basically lets himself die. And he was like such a emo kid that he like basically let the assassin kill him. And like, it really, it, that whole like thing, like really fucks up his Legion quite a bit. And and it really like shows you, and so you follow this like uh, these like basically slaves in this chaos legion um, for three books, and it really humanizes a lot of the uh, even the chaos like night lords are probably the most like depraved of all the chaos marines, but somehow he manages to really write a lot of like story and character into the marines, and like it really humanizes the various marines, and you start to see their personalities. Mm. And then the newer series, the Black Legion series, 
it's basically st it picks up like a s slightly after the scouring and for those of you that don't know after the horus heresy there's a time called the scouring and the scouring is essentially what it sounds like so the remaining loyalist primarchs fend off the forces of chaos and then they go on their own scouring of the galaxy to kind of get rid of and chase down all the remaining chaos forces and kind of purge them so this book takes place sometime after the scouring in between uh so the scouring's over and basically abaddon's gone into full-on emo mode and he's like hiding and just feeling sorry for himself and it's basically the story of how he kind of comes back starts the black legion because the black legion again was started by abaddon not by horus at the time it's called the uh as a, yeah the black legion wasn't until after uh the heresy and so basically um it's a really good book because it shows you like just the just like a lot of character in the chaos like it because chaos often is kind of caricatured as like evil tw mustache twirling bad guys but i really like the way that he's able to give them character now as far as my favorite books i still have to go with my og is which is the ravener uh, sorry the uh Eisenhorn trilogy. Um, there's mm -hmm. something about so good. there's something about his story and that trilogy that is 40k to me. It's the it's the like the faith. It's the fall. It's the 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 like the use of like demonic powers. It's like the scale of it. Like the 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 parade and uh, Thracian Prime in the second book, which is like kind of like this crazy oh shit moment. For those of you that haven't read it, it's like you read it and then you read it again and then you read it a third time because it's got that like level of scale. And then it's got the mm -hmm. intrigue and story that really I mm -hmm. really enjoy. Like it's got so much, it's got so many different things to it. And it's, you know, it doesn't have the bolter porn, but it has it in a way that's like feels like, like there's like loss, characters die, people that like you, you cared about, they mm -hmm. die. Like even, and there's time, there's a big time jump in between that trilogy. Uh, and then obviously, it leads into things like Ravner trilogy. It leads into things like the current Beckwin trilogy with, with prime pension. So mm -hmm. for me, that, that set of books, and I, I own those paperback from when I bought them in like 2003 <laughs> still, that for me is like, if someone was like, Hey, I don't know anything about 40 K background or I want to get into 40 K. Mm -hmm. What book should I get? I'd be like, get the Eisenhorn trilogy because it really gives you mm -hmm. like a very big, um, gives you a really big picture of like the broader 40 K, uh, universe horse heresy is too much also, to, get to start someone on yeah also it's really important if you guys are the are you guys fans of the eisenhorn trilogy there was like a sleeper release that happened the, uh this past year the magos came out which is a short story omnibus attached to like pretty much a full-length novel that's in the eisenhorn universe that takes place in different parts in the timeline yes. so i would definitely recommend checking that out because it helps fill in the blanks, like what happens when Ravener meets Eisenhorn for the first time, because it's a short story that goes into that. That's really cool, and and I think it's really important to like novellas. I think are, have always been a very important thing to me. I, I buy all of them, like for the Horus Heresy, obviously, and like like the for Gaunt's Ghost, the Savage Crusade, uh, like side books were really cool compendiums to go with that universe as can well. I, can I make a, an admission? I've never read any of the Gaunt's Ghost books. Oh fuck you, Jim! <laughs> They're so good. They're so good. I know. I feel bad. Oh, so I kind of feel like there was by the it's... time I I like started thought about reading them, there was like so many books. I'm like, ah, eh, I'm just never gonna read it. So, the, all right. The more recent. That is okay. Good. So the, next, the... worst black library book, or or let's say written material, um, because it could be like Jim, what is the your... worst and worst uh, least favorite author. Jim, what is yours? I'm so curious. Okay, so my my gotta... least favorite book is called Damnation of Pythos. It's a book <laughs> in the Horus Heresy series. I can't remember which book it is. But basically the 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 I'm just going to pull up the uh the plot summary here. But basically it's about a bunch of it's a 30th novel uh by by I... David Annandale and it's basically about about a bunch of like random leftover marines from Isfan 5, uh Iron Hands Raven Guard and salamanders uh, novella. and they basically end up on uh like an exodite planet and they basically just fight <laughs> dinosaurs for the whole book and then in the end nothing really happens except like yeah. they just fight and like literally it's like dinosaur it's like dinosaur fights 
Marines versus Dinosaurs, like, rumble. And then at the end of the book, you're like, <laughs> how did, like, and it's it's set in this, like, world that it's you've never heard of. It. And at the end of the book, like, they could have deleted the book from the whole Horus Heresy, and it wouldn't have changed a single thing, because, like, you're like, cool, a bunch of, like, random Marines fight dinosaurs for a whole book. And then, like, I think most yeah. of them end up basically dying. Spoilers. Um, I'm actually, yeah, they're all dead. I'm actually, li- well, yeah, but, but no, because the, the reason I say because there is actually a, yeah. a through storyline. Um, I think uh, if you read, uh, what was the novella they just did? Um, uh, Sons of the Selenar by Graham McNeil. Yes, yeah, so Shattered so Legions. Shattered Legions, I think it's the book. It starts with yeah. like a bunch of the, sh- the Shattered Legions. And like, mm-hmm. Damnation of Pythos, it's like, it takes some of the Marines or maybe a different set. I can't, I'm just looking at the names and like, I don't think any of these guys, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's like a whole different. new set of random Marines yeah. that weren't in Shattered Legions, weren't yeah. in Sons of the Selenar, that you haven't been following for a few books, throws them against Dinosaur Eldar Excites for a book. And then the, the the book ends and like, you're like, okay, but like nothing really happened. So that's my least yeah. favorite book. And then my least favorite author, um, I'd have to say is... Probably uh, now. Now I'm gonna have to. Now I'm gonna have to look it up because uh, I gotta make sure I get it right. Otherwise, I'm gonna get. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna get it. Uh... If you guys haven't read the Shattered Legion stuff, definitely read it. Uh, what's it called? The Seven... Yeah, Seventh Serpent. If you guys like Alpha Legion, do an Alpha Legion shit. Read Se- Seventh Serpent. It is amazing. Sorry. I, I mean, think it, it probably would be uh, Gav Thorpe is probably my worst, my least favorite author. I feel like he just has such a hard on for Dark Angels, and like the books are just not good, and they don't make any sense. Like even the whole Luther storyline, I feel like just doesn't make sense. You know he read the, you know he wrote that new Luther book, yeah, I know. right? I refuse to read it. So that's to. probably my least favorite. I don't have much more to say about how he sucks, but he sucks. Oh. Well, let me tell you why I think Gav Thorpe sucks so bad. Because I got a whole list. Well? Oh, hell yeah, dude. I got, I got a fucking bone to pick with him, man. Like, I'm a Raven Guard player, and he wrote the worst books in the 30K series other than Damnation of Pythos, or the fuck that was called. And what was the other? What was, the, what was that one where, like, the word bears made those, like, giant super ships in hell? Oh, uh, and then they, like, uh, Battle for the Abyss? Yeah, those two books so, sucked. Those are the worst books in the 30K series, followed by all Raven Good, all Raven Guard books written by him. The Primarch series Guy Haley book is actually really good, and you guys should read that one because it's actually cool. Um, but the problem about Gav Thorpe is Gav Thorpe can't write scale. Um, that's the first problem. He also can't write fighting because you, if you watch, if you read how he fights, a great example is a Dan Abnett duel. Between a Gav Thorpe duel. So <laughs> we'll just go to Solar War. I'll bring it down to Solar War. Warning spoilers. Gigachi, if you haven't Gigachi. read so, so Spoiler War, uh, Solar War, there might be spoilers here. So be, be warned. Abaddon fights like the first captain of the White Scars. And it is like the coolest sword fight because Abaddon's like, I'm getting my ass kicked. He's like, I am so not good enough to fight this guy. But he, like, you know. Is a smart tactician. He's got plot armor. Maybe he's got a way to. <laughs> he's got not plot get, armor. And not about, get yeah. murdered too. That's smart. Sure. But like, when Dan Ab- and also in that same book, Sigismund fights like overwhelming odds, and he goes like, "Oh, like, Karn talks about this time where time slows down, and you can just like read everyone's like, like uh, moves." So you have these great sword fight moments with like, um, there's a Kublai Khan. Yeah. Who's this first cat? There's a ju- ju- Jack. No, I don't know. know. Something con. Oh god, I'm so I'm so mad. I don't know this right now because he's barely no, in any of the books. He's in like it. two. Books. Like it, the Primarch. You'll, you'll see them. No, the first captain of. I don't know. Them. Jugat- Jubai. Yeah, sure. Jubai is Jubai. John Con. Because in John Templar. Con. <laughs> Whatever. Anyways, <laughs> him and Abaddon fight. It's really descriptive. You can really feel ocean. It's a very in like very. Very, um, it's like a very one-on-one, very intimate. Like you have like Sigismund, overwhelming odds, just murdering punks, and it's awesome. But then you get the first wall, which is a book that Gav Thorpe writes, and it's the stupidest book. It's so dumb because the premise is just dumb. Number one, number two, there's a fight where Karn the Betrayer fights Sigismund, 
and you're just like, oh, hell yeah, this is going to be baller. And it's over in like two pages because he's like, and then Karn had demon muscles. Blah! And then it was like <laughs> a page of him talking about his demon muscles. And Sigmund's like, oh, God, I can't fight this. And then like, then they go like full anime and Rogaldorn like swats him with like a tank sized chainsaw and he flies like 100 meters away. But then, like, three pages later, Karn's, like, mauling everyone still. Yeah, I'm, like, smiling. <laughs> and I'm just, like, pissed because you have, like, a hundred good characters in that engagement, and he makes these fights just sound so stupid. Like, there, there's no, like, intimacy. There's no, like, respect to the characters. It's just, like, stupidity. Yeah. Like, well, or the fact that that whole book is just stupid. So I think, like, I think one of the funny things, and, and I still don't forgive Gav Thorpe for some of the – uh, army books he used to write back in the day because when he was on the games design team he was an awful game designer and between him and Alessio Cavatore they basically broke uh, multiple game systems with their rules writing and like I just always thought it was funny how like a lot of these essentially um, novelists started as like like they were like a store manager who got a job at like head office as like a like a rules Q&A guy then turn into a design team guy and the next thing you know they're writing novels and they're like they're like published novelists like and I'm, that's not to say that they can't do that like that it's not possible to go through that but like sometimes i feel like their first like they they got the like black library gave them a shot to write these books because they were already like writing rules and like but like gw very rarely goes and gets people like you can't have someone that hasn't isn't already in, embedded in the universe come in and write a warhammer novel like it's gotta be. Uh, Dan Abnett did a pretty Who? good job, though. Dan Abnett. Right, no, but... He started off working with some Marvel comics, and then right. Came but like in. Dan Abnett, I think the thing is like, but look at his first book. What was it? Like, like, like some of his early books, like things. First and only. Uh, here, but here's the thing. It was like I don't think you get. A, I don't think you get a Gaunt's Ghost or, or an, uh, an Eisenhorn if uh, Dan Abnett is like. Like, the reason he was able to write those books that were so different... Th don't forget, Eisenhorn it, and the whole trilogy is written in the first person. That's, I think, the only set of books in the entire range that's written in the first person. So, he brought in a very unique style. Oh, Ravnor and the entire yeah, series exactly. is written in But that's person. what I'm saying. Like, that's yeah. a very unique style. And I think... Anyways, I think my point being mm -hmm. is, like, sometimes... And, like, I look at guys like Graham McNeil, who I think... Uh, or, like, Phil Kelly. Phil Kelly's written a few novels, and he's like, he was, like, a nightmarish rules writer. And so, I just always wonder. I'm, like... It's not that they shouldn't be in those, they shouldn't write those books, but I just hope they get, I hope there's like a little bit of training involved or there's some sort of education involved so that they write better books is all I'm saying. Or maybe they need better editors, but anyways. One more thing I got to say Go though really it. quick. Um, Gav Thorpe also, read the, also wrote the Last Chancers novel series. Um, this past year, uh, they released a new one called Armageddon Saint. Do not read it. I'm 100 pages in, and I still <laughs> don't know why I'm still reading. It's physical labor to get through every page because it's that bad. It, I'm not even trying to be, like, exaggerative, but uh, it's it's horrible. It is unbearable. If it makes you feel better, I have never read any of the Last Chancellor's novels either. So You're not missing anything. I can assure All you right, that. So that's an, I think that was a good, good discussion on authors.